stuff. Oh, there we go. We're recording. Lynn, so good to see you. Thank you so much for doing this, first of all. Of course. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. I think we should touch on the fact that we are both not a fan of video. What do you no. think? No, I am somebody who loves to be behind the camera, never in front of the camera. So this whole Zoom reality has brought, had to bring me out of my shell a bit. So it's a challenge. Right, right. We'll, we'll all be uh, video superstars at the end of this, likely. Yeah, yeah oh, goodness. I think. <laughs> yeah, well, well, thanks again for um, making time for this. I wanted to just ask you some questions. I think you... Um, have done so many great things, but you're kind of an unsung hero mm -hmm. in the industry. Um, it, I mean, you're definitely, you know, you're the face of it, but quietly. So um, I wanted to learn more about you. Um, I, I, I don't know if I've told you this before, but um, uh, at some of the retreats I've held, I like to do a, a gratitude and the number of people who write you thank you notes is astounding. So um, you're doing something quietly and people love you. So, um, so. Thank you for that, and I, I, I want to get to know you better. Um, so how did you get your start in the spa world? I mean, I, I read up on you, I know you've been in DC, you've done some things, but how did you find your love for spa and make such a great work of it? Yeah, that's actually a you know really interesting story because I never really was in the spa industry. I'm an association management professional, and that's really my career is working with associations and volunteer leaders. and. Um, I was in DC, as you mentioned, I went to University of Maryland and then kind of snowballed into a campaign and a convention inaugural and then into the White House and was there for four years. And when President Clinton was elected, all of the political appointees went, you know, had to leave. So um, I went to work for an association, the National Association of Chain Drugstores in Virginia. And my parents, uh, my dad was on the NCAA foundation board with Mr. Host. And I had been going to Final Fours my whole life. And I was at a Final Four and Mr. Host said, so what are you doing now? And he pulled me to Lexington, Kentucky to work with the National Tour Association. And I said, I'll give you one year because I thought there's no way I'm going to leave DC, right? But I'll go to Kentucky for a year. I'd never even been there. And then I was here a year and I was ready to leave. And he had just acquired the Wayne Smith Company, which brought iSpa to Lexington and he said, give me one more year and help me with turn I spa around. And I did and kind of fell in love with the volunteers and the members and the industry. And, you know, we were still fighting at that point to teach people that we weren't hot tubs. So that right. was a long time ago. You know, that was 1996. So if you think about how far we've come and then it's just been, you know, a, a blessing ever since it's been a fun ride. Yeah, I bet. So I bet it was interesting getting into it though. Um, I mean, my path was through fitness and I found uh, definitely some things that I, I mean, they, that rocked my world. I'm also from the Midwest. So um, my first job, I, I didn't know, I didn't get massages. I didn't live this life. So I had to hire a team that did that work. And so for me, it was this huge learning curve. Did you feel like you had a learning curve too or? I did. I had great mentors. I mean, Jane Siegerberg was chair at the time and she's just a great, you know, she taught me a lot. Um, I was a kinesiology uh, ma major and worked in clubs growing up at University of Maryland. Um, and then when I was in the White House, I worked at Nordstrom every night in cosmetics. And so I felt like I kind of understood the industry, but not at all the industry that it is today. But I was, I was running an association. So <laughs> getting to know those volunteers and running the operations of it. You don't have to be a spa owner or operator to run an association. They're very different roles. You just want to surround yourself with experts that can be the subject matter experts in the industry. And then you try to run the association and keep it going. So that's, it was a good dance. It was a good partnership with Jane. She taught me a lot. She was very patient. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Um, she's definitely a great person. And mm -hmm. so always connecting, always um, just, helping and yes for sure so uh gosh so what is your one of your most vivid memories through the through the years of of a hmm. conference or a board meeting or just something that really kind of shook you and made you realize that you're in this and mm -hmm. there's a lot gosh you know you think about where we've been 
over this 30 years. I mean, Ice Boss celebrating its 30 years this year. So, but I think a really vivid memory that stands out about talking about the community that we have, which is, so I work for a company that manages 12 other associations. So mm -hmm. there's 12 other teams that work there, 10, 10 other, you know, 12 other LINs. And I pull a lot from, from what they've gone through. And I think really what separates us is the community that is spa. It's very unique. People may think it's normal, but it's not. It's very unique. And I think about 9-11 and, you know, what happened after 9-11. And we had a transition with a chairman at the time who'd lost a child and Thad Highland and um, Gail Brady stepped in and the board really rallied and nobody wanted to fly. If you think about that, you know, it was yeah. a crazy time. And within 30 days after 9-11, we had a conference in Palm Springs that people still think is one of the best. And it was small, yeah. but it was powerful because we really needed to come together as a community. I mean, our industry are healers, you know, at heart. So they want to be healing and they want to be hugging. And that's what makes what we're going through now so challenging for our industry, because you wonder how the social distancing stigma is going to impact us moving forward and how we're gonna create kind of that new reality for ourselves in order to take the industry to a whole new level. We know things are gonna change, they have to change, but we need to make sure that we're offering the consumer that comfort and that safety as well as our employees. Right. Ooh, this one's a doozy, it really is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's something we're all going to talk about for a long time because it, in, a, in so many ways, Christy, it's a reset. Yeah. And we're struggling. I mean, ironically, we had an, a big event this month in Santa Barbara, as you know, the talent yeah. symposium, because we had 38,000 unfilled positions. Right. So it was this growth, 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 and it, we couldn't keep up with it. Right. Now, all these people are, you know, furloughed or laid off or... So what does the reset look like? And because now we have all these employees that are kind of free agents right. and how are we all going to come together and make sure that we continue to strengthen the industry? And what are the sanitation guidelines? You know, what are the, the new controls we're going to have to have in place and SOPs and standards that in everything to make the consumer walk in and feel like, you know, we've got this, we're safe. Right. It's, it's an well, opportunity. It, it's definitely an opportunity, but I think it's it's just it truly it's uncertain. So everything is just speculation and and guessing at this point. But um, where I am in Naples, Florida, uh, I don't. It's it's nationwide, but there's a little app called Nextdoor, and it's mm -hmm. uh, about communities. And I actually found it through Dana Stallings because she was you know trying to do good for a community. So I thought I'll sign up for that and I'll do it, but. Um, the conversations are interesting. I mean, there was a woman who said, um, can somebody do my nails right now? And she got lynched. I mean, and, and I think people want, like they want it. I think there's this desperation for connection, connection and touch and all of that. And going forward, it's just, yeah, it's just a big question mark. And I hope we don't lose yeah. that. Yeah. And we won't. We won't. People are creatures of habit. They're going to, you know, I miss my hairdresser, you know, don't look <laughs> close. Um, you know, we all want to get our nails done, but let your nails breathe for a while. I mean, right. we've got to be really careful not to, there's that whole deregulation concern in the industry, you know, professional products being handed out. We've, we've seen that with hairdressers. Oh, drive by and I'll give you your color and teach you how to do it. That's going to have a lasting negative impact on our industry when it comes to regulating and licensing, right. you know, people talking about, you know, not requiring licensing. So we're fighting for these things. And in this time of uncertainty, let's not do something that's going to hurt our effort leader. So, you know, everybody take your polish off, let your nails breathe for a while. That's fine. You know, let your hair grow out, let your eyebrows grow out for goodness sake. So we'll get through it. It's not forever. And I think that more than ever, we're going to be confident in going back. No one's going to stop me from my hairdresser or my nail tech or even my massage therapist. Right. But but there, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, it's, it's going to be different. And I think that's okay. If it's different, we just need to be able to embrace that difference, knowing that it's going to last for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess one thing I've been grappling with too is, um, and anytime I've been sick and no one feels good when they're sick, just thinking, you know, how can I be so thankful for my health? But then there's always that moment where you get past it. 
you know, you get past it and then you forget and it comes back again. But I, I just really hope that this is a, a grand sweeping situation where people can be more grateful. And I, I do think they're going to need our industry more than ever. I do too. I do too. And I love seeing that our, our, um, I don't know, our world heal. You know, when you hear about the animals coming back into Venice, into the canals, and you see, you know, um, the, the smog lifting in Hong Kong and LA, and, you know, it's a reset for all of us for a lot of reasons. And there was this kind of challenge of who's busier, right? We're all so busy. Oh, yeah. we're, busy. we're so busy. There was like this badge of honor of being busy when in reality, we should be spending time with family and friends and hiking and walking and so when we talk about a reset, I think it's a reset that's going to last. And I just hope that we don't go back to the busy again. I Although I have to say th this last month has been insanely busy between, you know, us pushing out standards and the COVID-19 page. And we're mm -hmm. trying very hard to be a resource for the members. Mm -hmm. I feel like we got a bit caught flat footed when we had to shut down so quickly. So many spas and spas were just begging us, do you have a checklist? Do you have a checklist? And Right. Now, now we've got a great task force of people that are working hard to put, open up documents. You know, how do you open back up? What are the cleansing policies that we're going to have to do? So we don't want to get caught again. So there is a lot of really good volunteers working hard. That's, that's great. And you always do that so well. Well, thank you. It's a definitely, we're lucky to have so many great members that volunteer their time. So um, going on to conference, uh, mm -hmm. what have, through the years, what have been some of your favorite speakers or moments within conference? Because honestly, I, I've always said this from the very first one I attended, it is like Disney World for spa and information and knowledge. It is just like awe-inspiring. So mm -hmm. um, from all the stuff that you do, and you've been to every one, I mean, what have, what have been your favorite moments? Yeah, I think I missed the first three maybe, but... Um, one of the speakers that really jumps out at me um, continues to be John Wooden, and he was a coach. I don't know if you were there for that one, but he recited a poem that has really, really stuck with me, and we put it in pulse a few times. I think Jim Collins coming twice, we never thought we would get Jim Collins, ever, uh -huh. ever. And we had to do um, basically a campaign to get him to understand w why he could, what, how he could help our industry, because if he can't make a difference, he doesn't want to do it. So when we had him the first time, he was really powerful. And then the recession hit and we needed some support on the back end. And so we convinced him to come back. And because we did what he asked us to do, we became very data driven and very data focused. And so I think he was really proud that we took his advice. And so he came twice. I mean, you know, some of the celebrities, I think about Maya Angelou and Sidney Poitier, and I think gosh, you know, how are we so lucky to get all of these amazing people? And it's just over the years, it's just been such a blessing that we've been able to sit in a room and learn from some of these great minds. And at some point, we're going to have to do a mashup or a compilation of, you know, all the lessons we learned from them, because we've been, we've been really blessed for that. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd love to see that. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, so what do you think some of the, the valleys have been, I mean, outside of big events? I mean, what, what I've been looking at is um, I'm always amazed by timing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the longer I've been in business, just sometimes, sometimes you're too ahead and sometimes you're too far behind, but getting things just right. Um, mm -hmm. how, how do you work through that? Because I feel like you get a lot of things timed just right. Hmm. It may feel like that. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like I said, our volunteer leaders, I mean, we are so, so incredibly, um, our industry is just has this just abundance of strong leaders that really devote, you know, time. They're not paid, you know, they're board members that are volunteering their time and they, they take their jobs so seriously. And I think of, you know, I mentioned 9-11 and then I think about the recession with Jean Cole being chair. And then I think Ella was treasurer at the time. And, you know, we, we sat in a room and we said, what do we have to provide our members so that when we get on the other side of this and we will, that they look back and said, I could never survive with, I could not have survived without iSpa. Yeah. And that's how the snapshot surveys were born. Okay. You know, the monthly snapshot surveys, because what we were hearing from our members is they needed real time data. Mm -hmm. And that's 
Jim Collins told us to do is data, 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 not just the Price Waterhouse Coopers big studies or consumer studies, but data real time so they could take it to their GM. And we need that now more than ever. So, you know, we've got a consumer uh, research piece in the field that went into the field about three or four weeks ago with PwC. We just jumped on it really quickly. We have a great relationship with them. And then we did the COVID-19 snapshot survey, which, gosh, you know, Christy, it was out for a week and it was already outdated because things were just moving so rapidly. Right. So now we're doing one in April so we actually can have some comparative data so I think when you, when you think about what some of those valleys are, it's, it's arming yourself with facts. I was on a call yesterday where the young lady said that there's webinar fatigue right now because there's so many experts talking to you and they're all so great and they're so qualified, but there's only so much we can take in. And her observation was that people just really needed to be heard versus yeah talk to. Um, And I think that's, we've seen that in our virtual chats, you know, we've had four or five now, and there's another one this afternoon, um, where it's just limited to 15 ISPOM members, and they get on and they just talk to each other. Yeah, But we've learned so much, and every call's been different, because the people on it are different, and their needs are different. Right. So I think just, you know, listening to people and hearing their story, because we all have our own story, is, is critical. Um, I don't think I answered your question about valleys, but, um, (laughs) you know, being, not making stuff up and being data driven in times of turmoil or crisis, I think would be key. Right. So what, what initiatives do you feel like have been really successful and that you've worked through or come together with, um, the leadership yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I, I would love to have said the April event because that was a big initiative that we've done and we've never really done a, a, a symposium or something like that that was specific to a challenge or a topic. Mm-hmm. So that was heartbreaking to cancel. Um, but I think some of the big initi- initiatives, certainly our media event where we, we can take the PricewaterhouseCoopers industry statistics to the media each year and really show them you know, how we've grown as an industry and, you know, we're not hot tubs and we're going to continue to grow and, and really put that flag in the ground that the research that we've done for sure. A lot of the textbooks, you know, that John Corpy really spearheaded years ago are still so valuable. Now we've actually got a handful of folks right now, Sherry, Tennessee at university of Maryland and some others that are updating the textbooks so that we know that schools are really utilizing textbooks in a different way, so they're all online now, mm-hmm. but we know that it shouldn't have overhead projector or facsimile in our textbooks. <laughs> so we're doing some housekeeping there. Um, but really those, I would say those big initiatives, and also I remember something Andrew Gibson said to me a long time ago. He was on the board and he said that he really admired ISPA's um, ability to stay true to our mission. And that we kind of don't get caught up in chasing this windmill or this one or this trend or this trend that we just, you know, in every single page of every single board book, the bottom of it, it says two questions that our board has to focus on. Does it strengthen the membership and does it, or does it strengthen the industry and does it help our membership? If it doesn't do those two things, we're not going to talk about it because that's our mission. It's got to strengthen the industry and it's got to help our members because our members are shareholders. So I always loved Andrew reminding us of that, that we just can't, we can't get distracted. Right. Go chase the next. There's great entrepreneurs in our industry that are doing really fun and innovative things. And that's great. And we want to support them, but we don't have to be them or compete with them. We just need to continue to do what our members need from us. And in the end, that's why we've been around for 30 years. Right. I actually had to take notes. Oh, discreetly. Okay. That was, that was great. I love that. Um, so if it looked like I was looking down, no, I was taking not notes. at all. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I feel like, uh, what would somebody would say, uh, hashtag that tweet that out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. Right. 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 Um, so gosh, well, I, you know, sometimes, I don't know, again, experience and having been in this industry for a while, I'm just amazed by life and the changes, you know, from the simple things from, I mean, I used to buy gas and there was no credit card, you know, just stuff like that. So as an industry, just seeing the vast sweeping changes 
social media, um, you know, all this, all the creativity, all the stuff. Spa was sort of this underground thing, I think, in 96. It wasn't as popular as it is now. And I guess my question is, what things have you seen that are good? What things have you seen that are just interesting or questionable because everyone's kind of an expert now? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. I, you know, I think we were seeing a lot of technology takeover because we didn't have enough staff. Mm -hmm. And you think about what the economic impact of our industry could be if we didn't have all these empty treatment rooms because we don't have staff. I think our biggest challenge, you know, is to get more people into the industry a bigger, you know, much bigger now than it was a month ago. Sadly, mm -hmm. I'm afraid we'll lose some folks, but I do feel like maybe that gateway back into the spa is going to be those no touch treatments, whether it's salt therapy or cryotherapy or, you know, light stem, so many great inventions. Um, which we, which were kind of being put out there to the consumer because there wasn't enough therapist. Right. Now I feel like it's going to be, let's get them in the spa, maybe no touch at first until they're comfortable and they see our standards and our practices again, and they begin to get more comfortable because as everybody begins to step outside of their houses, which we will, we're going to be looking for some reassurance. I um, mean, Delta is now saying they're not going to sell the middle seat anymore for a oh, while, you know, it's, right. You know, which is a bonus, you know, but yeah. like the restaurant's going to have, you know, what is conference going to look like? You know, how's the expo going to look different? How's the general session going to look different? How, you know, how is everything going to be looking different? And as we have this time to step back, I do my best thinking on my lawnmower on the weekends. I love it. So, you know, what is it going to look like and how are we going to be prepared to open up? And I think that's the big thing that we're hearing on all of these calls is the members are desperate to know, like, what's it going to look like? What's it going to look like? And it's cool in a way because we have a way to transform an industry and do it differently. And every property and every business has a way to say, huh, okay. If I could start over knowing all the mistakes I made before, right? But I want my business to be moving forward right now. I can start over. What would I do differently? If we all really think about that and use this as a time to say, I'm going to clean some things up. I don't know what that is for each of us personally and professionally, but it's, it is kind of a gift when you think about it in that way. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's been interesting also personally through the years, you know, doing events and you know there have been ebbs and flows and peaks and valleys and all that and there have been times where it's been really really hard and what's interesting is this year I have never loved what I do more than now so it's mm -hmm. almost like I mean I still I still do very very much so but I think you know talking about the reset depending on where you are on your continuum of work you know how does it feel to be in this? Do you do you like what you're doing? You know, how could we do it better? It's right. This is this is definitely a gift to have those thoughts and hopefully be strategic and and think long term. Right. So. And how we treat our teams is going to be critical moving forward because right. you know how you're checking in with them and how you're supporting them and how they're feeling. I know things feel a little harried and we're all running in different directions, but hitting that pause button and saying, gosh, if I checked in with Christy lately, I wonder how she's doing. And you've got all these members and all these board members and you've got staff and you've got volunteer leaders. And, you know, are we checking on them? Because right. are they isolated? You know, are they, how are they doing? Because I think we're all in our own world right now in some way. And I think the, the businesses and the spas that do that really well mm -hmm. are going to be the ones that pop back much more quickly because yeah. you're only as good as the team you have. That's a good point. But in, in that, in that um, direction, how are you keeping up with the membership? Um, I think, and, and kind of taking out social media, even though I think that is probably right now the best way. Um, gosh, did you ever think that you should get personal phone numbers or emails or all that stuff? Because I, I would love to keep in touch with, everyone but now they're gaps so right. yeah that, i guess that's just a big question 
Yeah. So we started, gosh, like three weeks ago, we've got such a great marketing team. Crystal's so smart. You know, she started pushing out, um, give us your personal email so we can stay in touch with you. Once we heard that when you're furloughed, you, you're cut off from your work email, yeah. we added a column, we use Salesforce. And so we added a column in Salesforce to capture everyone's personal email. What's different for us, Christy, is our members are the property, not the individuals. So right. if they're cut off from their property, right. then technically they're not members. So we wanted to figure out how do we stay in touch with them because so many of them want to be part of these new SOPs and these new employee handbooks that we're working on right now. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to give them a way to keep in touch. We give them, we reset their password for them so they could still access. But we really have taken everything off our website that, that they need is not password protected anymore. We really felt like we needed to embrace the community versus just our members. So that's one thing. Social media has been our friend. We're doing a lot of out, you know, push, pushing out um, on the virtual chats and reaching out. Garrett's done a lot of videos, which have been really great because he's currently now, um, if he's not working the front desk, he's security on property at oh, wow. you know, his, his hotel. So everybody's doing stuff they never did before. But I think you're right, is how do you stay connected to a community that's cut off from their work email and sadly so many of us are defined by our work right so right. if you don't have if your only communication with them is through their work email there is that gap and we just need to make sure that everybody tries to stay as connected as possible right yeah so reach out <laughs> reach out um, all the time i mean just you know instant messaging it's you know on facebook which you did which i never check i'm trying to get better at that but just check on folks you know check on neighbors and i love that your thing about next door because you're you're exactly right that we just don't know what people right next to us are dealing with right well and just you know switching over to like everybody working so hard sometimes you don't know your neighbors very well i mean i just moved to where i live about a year ago and you know the people flush against me said hello, but the people across the street didn't. And right. I've been reaching out. It's so strange. Like there's a woman across the street in her eighties and she's all by herself. It's just so scary. Yeah. And I mean, even before this, I was like, I want to be her friend. I want to make sure yeah. that, you know, she has someone. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's a tangent. Thank you for listening. Yeah. It is true though. I feel like, you know, this whole social distancing, we're physically distancing. We're yeah. not socially distancing and there's a difference. We're socially connecting more than ever. Zoom is a perfect example of that, but yeah. we're physically distancing temporarily. It's all temporary. It's not yeah. permanent. And if we could just, you know, you can do anything for a short period of time, you know, it just, we just need to change our mindset. You know, you work out a lot and just thinking about, you know, your trainer says, give me 15. You're like, okay, I can do 15. Right. And they're like, give me 15 more. Okay, I can do 15 more. But what if they said, what if they originally said, do 150? You'd say, right. no way. But if we just do it in little chunks, we're just going to get through it. And we just need to remind each other, it's not forever. We'll be together again as a community soon. But this is what we have to do right now. Right. So given the current circumstances, is there anything um, you think our industry can do uh, to accomplish together, even if we're sort of all individually in this place, staying in place? Uh, I think our industry is doing it. I think the stories of kindness are unbelievable. Uh, you know, I know our um, editor of Pulse, Jameson, is, is frantically capturing them, and Nelson is pushing out via social media. We're all trying so hard, but the number of people that are now switching to making hand sanitizer, or they've donated all of their their masks or they're volunteering their time or they're dropping off food. I mean, you know, it's unbelievable what our community has done to support the, you know, the, the first responders and just our community in general. So mm -hmm. our individual communities in general. So I think those stories are going to linger for a really long time. And I think if we pull together to, really fly that flag for the consumer that they have to go to spa more than ever. Because let's remember, the number one reason people go is to manage their stress. And we're sitting in a more stressful time than ever before. So that messaging to the consumer, I think our responsibility is gonna be pushing out through the media when 
this begins to open up a little bit, that spas are a safe haven and a place for well-being and health and, you know, go, go to your local spa for these things, you know, and there has to be those, a cadence almost of how we go back because some are going to be like all in and others are going to be more timid and we need to, we need to meet people where they are. Right. Well, and I guess that's the thing. I think some people will be talking back to the woman who was asking about nails. I think people are like at the ready right now, like Black Friday, you know, they will be at the door. There will be a line for sure. But I guess the, the challenge might be the people who've never gone, who don't know about spa. So I think that's an opportunity too. There is. There, 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 I mean, I don't mean this to sound like a bad thing, but there is so much opportunity right now if people can get quiet enough to think about it and, and really just think, right. be still <laughs> instead of. So how do you, how do you, I think you're spot on. And I think from a bit, we're all very careful not to be salesy right now. Okay. We're all very careful not to feel icky about that. So, you know, what are those little inroads that you say you're a day spa owner in Lexington, Kentucky? What are those inroads you can do right now to help your business later? Mm -hmm. And you're doing it because you care about the, the nurses and the doctors and the first responders, but you also know that once you have that connection with them, there's a friendship and a loyalty there. So you may naturally be bringing people into your property by being kind, right? It starts right. Kindness. So I think that's an opportunity to kind of expand people's knowledge to the small businesses. We're seeing all kinds of commercials on TV now locally about, you know, from Com from Commerce Lexington saying, support your local restaurants. Mm -hmm. Here's how. And I think that's going to come full circle. And we've lost a bit of that. Yeah, I think. And so everything's going to feel just different. You know, it's just going to be that local community is going to be stronger than ever, I believe. And that'll help our businesses. That'll help our small businesses. I think so too. I think yeah. so too. And, and always, I guess the interesting thing is even the hotel hospitality industry, there's always a segment that's not group business. How, you know, how are they connecting with their communities? Right. Uh, that, I think that's a huge opportunity too. I remember having this conversation with Michael Tompkins like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe five weeks ago. I don't know. He makes me cry. Five years. <laughs> he, can predict, he can predict. He said, um, he calls me Lillian. He said, Lillian, all the hotels are going to shut down. And I, and I was just not in a mental place. And I just right. said, really, Michael, all the hotels in the world are going to shut down. He said, yeah, they are. I said, well, that's just ridiculous. I'm going to choose not to be doom and gloom and I'm going to be optimistic. And he goes, okay, good luck with that. And then weeks later, all the hotels in the world are shut down. And I right. called him and said, how in the world did you know that? Because in my wildest dreams, I would never have thought we would be where we are. Right. I think hotels are going to have the hardest time. Just, I mean, they're going to bounce back quickly, but the spas in the hotel may not be the first to open. And that's going to be, you know, that's going to be our challenge is to help the consumer feel comfortable with that. I mean, all the meetings being canceled is just, it's heartbreaking that we're not meeting as industries, you know, and right. you've been, you know, such a pioneer with all of the events that you've been doing and, you know, the Energizer Bunny, you just keep going and going and going and you're very successful in that. And I think your, your guests, if you will, will want to come back to a spa buzz very quickly because it's so personal and it's so it's such a connection and they're right. missing that right now. So people will come back. It will just be maybe a little bit slower than we want it to be. So you just right. need to hang in there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, there's such a deep love for these people over this I know. industry. Yeah. I know. I know. And we're lucky they're super smart. You know, right. we're sitting on an industry of very talented, smart, you know, entrepreneurs and leaders. And I think, you know, we'll talk in a year and we're going to be stronger on the other side of this. I, and I know it's probably the optimistic in me, but I do believe that we'll lift each other up and we'll embrace each other and rise up like the spa industry does. And we'll be stronger and smarter on the other side. Yeah. I agree. So are there any questions I haven't asked you or anything you'd like to say? 
No, I'm so grateful to have a chance to see your pretty face and connect with you live. And this is nice. <laughs> I want you to stay healthy and you take care of you because our industry needs you. As I said, you've been such a, you've been such an anchor and, and much needed. So I appreciate you reaching out to me and um, we got through our, you know, scare of video calls together. <laughs> pros now yeah um when, when, you, so when you start your youtube channel let me know when that's not gonna happen I call you no. all the time <laughs> well i hope you have a wonderful easter and enjoy your holiday weekend try to take a long walk somewhere okay we'll do stay well and thank you so you much too. you too take care bye-bye